Hey, what's up you guys? So I just got back from staying at a party hostel in Budapest and this was my first party hostel from a guest perspective and not like a volunteer working perspective. So I wanted to share my experience with you guys because oh, what an experience it was. I am coming at you today with some of my craziest stories that happened over the past week. Okay, so we're just gonna jump right in. As soon as I arrived there, one, I thought it was hilarious that I saw four people that I had known at Wild Elephants in Slovakia. I was like, wow, what a small world. These people just like party hostel hop and I think that's amazing. So I already knew that I was gonna have a blast because I had a blast with everybody at Wilds. And like, I got my room and I was in like a 10 bed dorm because I just wanted to pay for the cheapest one. It was like $9 a night. Every single person that walked in the door was automatically my friend. Like, I was like, hi, who are you? Where are you from? And it was just great. And everyone's like, oh, are you doing the, the Yay your train event tonight and I was like yeah I guess so I don't know what it is but I'm down so Jaeger train I have a video of this because it was it was cool shit we all go to this bar and then people from the hostel set up this this Jaeger train we all pitch in like 11 euros for five Jaeger bombs each and then they put them in this design on a giant table down in like the the basement of this bar we all get our tickets for them one person goes up and then knocks one of the shots in and then it just like creates a like a little train and they all get knocked in and i was like that's amazing they said it was like a hungarian tradition and i'm like i've never heard of that but that's like the best tradition ever and then after drinking five jaeger bombs i barely remember what happened the rest of the night man those are those are very sweet Oh yeah, there's karaoke. We all we all did karaoke down in the, the basement of this bar. So I thought that was a really cool like nightly activity. Like that was something unique that I had never done before. And you didn't have to participate in the Jaeger trade if you didn't want to, but of course it was my first night there, so I'm like I'm I'm down for whatever. If you wanted to, you could just go and get drinks at the bar. Which might have been smarter to slow your roll, because you're then you're just carrying five Jaeger bombs. Like you're you have to down them all, otherwise you're carrying around five drinks and that's a lot. They give it to you like stacked like this. I'm like, what? So I did those. I don't remember the rest of the night. Next night comes, we are, we're told we're going to this bar called Morrison's. And I was like, okay, cool, I'm down. What, what does this entail? Um, so it's like a giant club with like bars within that club. Like there's like a karaoke bar, like a techno bar, a regular chill bar. I saw one with like a pole in it, like a sports bar, just like a bunch of different ones. And you pay, for a wristband once you get in. It's like 15 euros. And then it's unlimited drinks from 9 p.m. It's like if you get in like right before nine, you pay 15. I think if you get there after nine, you pay a little bit more. But from 9 p.m. to 3 a.m., unlimited drinks. You go up to the counter, you do pay like a deposit for a cup. And uh, once you give your deposit for the cup, then you just keep going back with that same cup and getting your drinks, or you, they give you shots. I kept doing shots of Jaeger. I was, I was on a Jaeger train while I was there for these, these few days. But oh my God, we all got so messed up. We were told we were like bar hopping in the club with everybody, but we all just vanished. And most of us were just at karaoke the entire night because that was where all the fun was. It was also great because it was like inside. So you check your coat when you get in and it was only like, a dollar to check your coat so then you don't have to worry about because it's cold there you know you don't have to worry about not wearing a cute outfit because you just wear a coat and you take it off and then you go and get it at the end of the night and i thought that was awesome but yeah that was that was another awesome experience and so that's also when they started this i don't think it was the first start of it but it was where i started to hear about it of this bet with this banana costume <laughs> This turned wild. This is basically the rest of my story surrounding this banana costume. So funny enough, it came from Wild Elephant's Hostel. And the bet was whoever falls asleep first has to wear the banana costume for 24 hours. So somebody did that. And then, you know, the first person that passed out wore the banana costume. And then it came down to Vayate where I was staying at that hostel. And so they were like, okay, well now there's gotta be another bet for who's gonna wear it the next 24 hours. And I wasn't involved in this one, but it was um, whoever gets the least amount of kisses. Like when we were at Morrison's club, uh, they were basically running around like, kiss me, kiss me, kiss me to like anybody that they could find. And I think the least number was like 31, but then the person that won got like 36 and I was like, 
damn good for you, my guy. Or girl, I don't, I don't remember if it was a guy or a girl that won. The person that lost, who didn't get enough kisses, had to wear the banana costume for the rest of the next day. And that was when I started playing. So the next night was, I think it was um, a pub crawl, just like a regular pub crawl. We played who's the least fuckable. <laughs> so basically, we, we were a group of like 10 people. We went to the bar and we went and we would grab like a random person, guy or girl, we would like trade on and off. And we would ask them, who in this group would you, would you want to fuck? And so we would all just like stand there and like smile. And so that person would pick somebody and then they're out of the group, right? Like they, they're, they're, they're safe, they're in the clear, they've won. So that kept going on. And then like eventually it got down to two people and like went up to somebody like, oh, like who would you fuck out of these two? And so the person that never got picked had to wear the, the banana costume for the next night. It wasn't me, I didn't have to wear the banana costume, but it was just so funny. The people that we chose, some of them were like engaged, like some of, them, some of them were here to have a great time and they were so happy to be a part of it. It was just hilarious. And then the next night, I filmed a little bit, so I have some of this as footage to show you guys, but the next night was truth or dare. Um, so the guy that was wearing the banana costume would go to people and be like, truth or dare. And if you denied the dare, you automatically had to wear the banana costume the next day. So you didn't want to deny it. And you were only allowed one truth. So. I used my truth first and then he didn't even want to ask me one. He was just like, meh, next, whatever, like, I'm, I'm gonna get you on your dare. Thankfully it never got to me because of the other dares that were presented. And thank God, because I also would have lost if, if I got the, the one that the person didn't do. So it started out with, um, first dare was eat a leaf. And the guy ate a leaf. Here's that clip. Eat the leaf! Eat the leaf! Eat the leaf! I can't! Have you even eaten a leaf before? <laughs> not his leaf. Not his leaf. <laughs> oh. Swallow! Banana man! <laughs> oh, fuck me. <laughs> you were the shit leaves, man. I'm going to score it. Let this be a lesson. Let this be a lesson to all of you. This is the least you'll have to find. Oh, God! Props to him for eating the leaf that looked like it was nasty and had been on the ground and it was wet and it was dry and hit. So the next dare was um, this guy had to dump his drink over his head, which I feel for that dare because we had to wait in a long line for that drink. And it was like the first drink of the night. So this guy was probably just like sober and had to then take his, his alcoholic drink and dump it over his head. He took his shirt off so he wouldn't get like soaked because it was pretty cold outside despite the people in this video wearing short sleeves. It was pretty cold. I was wearing like two pairs of pants and a jacket. Oh! <laughs> Wait, <laughs> Killer trooper right there. The third one was um, the manager of the hostel had to get into the banana costume with the, the guy running it. <laughs> that was just, that was really funny to watch. They killed it and they stayed in there all the way till we got to the next bar, so props to them. Oh, sorry, she's <laughs> the next one was a same gender kiss and I think one of the participants was a much bigger trooper than the other. That was that was quite a kiss and we all we all cheered so loudly. It was it was so funny. I dare you to kiss Ryan for three seconds with Tom! Yeah. Hey, no, 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 way too far. <laughs> Type, but okay. <laughs> You'll be fine. Everything's okay. Don't worry, Selma. We'll dare you to kiss the Oh, who's gonna lean in first? Okay. Oh! Obviously, me at this point. Oh, yeah. You can do the egg. Three, you know two, one. Oh, Such a snap. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely longer than three. And then after that. Um, this happened. We dare Sam to, you're gonna like this one. Okay, I'm saying. You are. To suck Salma's nipple. <laughs> <laughs> this time you guys are for 10 seconds. Yes. 
So as you can tell, I could not really film anymore because that was as, as least, that was the least bad that it had gotten that I recorded the, the asking of. And then, you know, a lot of people didn't give it. But then one guy who had like just got there today, I think it was his first party hostel, very new to the scene, seemed very shy. He was like, do a naked lap. And he was like, can I do it in my boxers? And he's like, nope. And he's like, I'm not doing that. And he's like, well, then I guess you're wearing the banana costume. And he just didn't want to be a part of it. So I wound up being the guy, his friend was the guy that dumped the drink over his head. So then he wound up taking the banana costume for him, like a trooper. Other people were like, I'll do it, I'll run around naked. <laughs> and they were like, no, it's his there. That wound up ending that. And then we all just went to the club and partied and, and had a great rest of our night. Honestly, the banana costume gets you a lot of attention. Everybody wants to dance with the with the banana person. By the end of that night, it had gotten pretty, pretty grody. Like the guy laid on the floor in it. Right, after, right before he was supposed to give it to somebody. Like somebody spilled a drink and got dirt all over the ground because of all of our shoes. And the guy in the banana costume laid in it. And it looked like it was, he was like an overripe banana. It was um, a sight to see for sure. But yeah, and then for my last night there, I didn't really do anything with the, I think he just like handed it to another guy for the, the banana costume thing. But I don't think there was actually any dares. This next story is mainly about what we did for this activity night, because this is not something I had ever done before. We played pub golf, and I was like, oh, so like we're gonna drink and go mini golfing. Nope, that was not it at all. We we're, we were, like the plan was we go to nine bars. We split into three teams. There was about eight people in each team. And so everybody gets a drink, like a mixed drink, not a shot, like a mixed drink with no ice. So I stuck with vodka orange because at least I was replenishing some vitamins while doing this. Basically, once everybody on your team gets their drink, you all just start chugging it, and like you're not like you. It doesn't matter how long it takes you. You just can't break and like sip it. You just have to go like you have to completely do it. You can't spill it either. And for every spill or every break someone takes, and you get like a point. It's kind of like golf. You want to have like like the lowest amount of points by the end, and that. That makes your team win. And we were so close, like literally the entire time we were ahead. And other people, like I think people like spilled and got, like three points on like the first bar. And we had to get to nine. And it surprisingly didn't really make me that drunk, but I think it was because I just had so much orange juice within it that it was, wow. <laughs> but on the last hole, the last bar, somebody went home with somebody else. And I'm like, I get it, but like you couldn't have just stayed for one more bar so we could have won the bragging rights. But it's fine, it's fine. It's fine. And then we all played karaoke because that's what you do in Budapest, Hungary. You just do a bunch of karaoke. That was like, I didn't really do much during the day because I was out all night. So I really had to like work my remote job during the day. I didn't really have a chance to work my remote job, go out to see the city and go out at night. It's like, I kind of have to pick two. And one of them always has to be my job. I can't just not do my job. Otherwise I wouldn't be able to be out here for so long. But um, yeah, I'm actually going back to spend another 11 nights there. And probably by the time you guys see this video, I will have already stayed there. So I might have more to show about that after the place that I'm going to next. I'm like in Budapest and then my next video you'll see where I'm heading next and then I'm going back to Budapest because I'm just trying to spend as much time in Hungary as I can to really learn the language but whatever happens I can guarantee that it will continue to be a sight to see. Thank you guys so much for watching please hit that subscribe button so you're ready for all the awesome videos I have coming at you and I will catch y'all on the next one.